Deleuze's exploration of the concept of force can be understood through two distinct phases, both somewhat overlapping. In the first phase, linked to his earlier focus on Spinoza and Nietzsche, force is primarily seen in relation to ideas of speed and movement. Deleuze is particularly drawn to Spinoza's ambition to view life as an expression of a fundamental drive where the body consists of forces it transmits and receives. In this phase, force is associated with a striving for life beyond conventional moral judgments. This perspective is also applied to Nietzsche who is portrayed as someone following Spinoza's idea of thinking in terms of speeds, slowness and unformed elements. In the second phase, mainly associated with Deleuze's collaboration with Guattari, the concept of force becomes more generalized, extending to the entire social order. While retaining influences from Spinoza and Nietzsche, Deleuze now emphasizes force as power over the social realm. The earlier focus on movement and speed remains, but there is a shift towards highlighting a specific effect of force called puissance or strength as opposed to coercive power. In Spinoza's major work, Ethics, demonstrated in geometrical order, each entity has an inherent disposition to preserve itself, termed as conatus. For Spinoza, the good of a being is what leads to its self-preservation, while the bad opposes this capacity. Desire in beings is directed towards what aids their self-preservation. The strength of conatus determines a being's ability to act with pleasure accompanying increased capacity and pain accompanying diminished capacity. According to Spinoza, freedom is advanced when one's scope for action expands achieved through a life guided by reason and knowledge. Deleuze, in his interpretation, connects power and action in Spinoza. He emphasizes the inseparable connection between power and the capacity to be affected. This distinction is crucial for Deleuze's later development of a materialist ontology of constitutive power, a key goal in his collaboration with Guattari on the capitalism and schizophrenia project. While Spinoza laid the foundation, Deleuze sees Nietzsche as the, as the thinker who brought about a comprehensive amplification of Spinoza's principles into a full-fledged ontology of constitutive power. Nietzsche's method of dramatizing thought or dramatology focuses on the speed, slowness, spatial temporal dynamics and intensity of concepts in interaction with entities. Nietzsche's approach challenges traditional representational thinking which relies on notions of truth and falsity. Nietzsche proposes a topology and typology based on concepts like the noble and the base, the high and the low. Deleuze follows Nietzsche in advocate, advocating for a sense-making approach that treats sense not as a fixed principle but as an effect produced by a specific machinery of thought. Nietzsche's aphorisms, according to Deleuze, are like machines that produce sense in a specific order unique to thought different from other, other orders such as those discovered by Freud or in political and practical contexts. The call is to be the machinists or operators of these thought processes. In Deleuze's interpretation, the key idea on Nietzsche's thinking is the concept of force. Nietzsche suggests that all, all reality is essentially a quantity of force. However, he believes that this concept needs further development and introduces the notion of the will to power, which Deleuze sees as a culmination of Spinoza's conat. The relationship between force and the will to power can be explained through several propositions. The essence of a force lies in its quantitative difference from other forces, and the quality of a force is defined by this difference. The will to power is the principle that enables synthesis of forces, allowing the emergence of both quantitative and qualitative aspects. Force and the will to power should not be confused. Force is what can, while the will to power is what wills. When two forces are together, one dominates and the other is domi dominated. The will to power is the internal element driving the production of force. 
The will to power, according to Nietzsche, has a genealogical aspect related to the production of force. Chance is not eliminated by the will to power, as it remains flexible and open to contingency. Forces can be active or reactive, with affirmation and negation as primary qualities of the will to power. Reactive forces diminish or nullify the power of active forces. All sensibility involves a becoming of forces, categorized as active, reactive, developed reactive and active becoming reactive. The eternal return indicates that becoming reactive is non-being, producing becoming active and affirming the existence of becoming. When the first volume of the Capitalism and Schizophrenia Project and Oedipus was published in 1972, a new intellectual and political context emerged in France. At that time, prevailing philosophical paradigms like structuralism and phenomenology had reached a point of exhaustion. Structuralism relying on Saussure's language concept is challenges when its linguistic code could not serve as a transcendental principle. Phenomenology struggled to detach itself from the Cartesian model of subjectivity. Simultaneously, psychoanalytic concepts of subjectivity derived from Freud and his followers were problematic. Freud viewed libidinal drives as needing containment for the sake of civilization and deviations from Freud's principles like Wilhelm Reich's call for liberating libidinal drives were met with resistance. The intellectual landscape shifted in the late 1960s and 70s in France. The failure of the Soviet communist project and the collapse of Bandung project led to a decline in hopes for a non-aligned third world. Additionally, the May 1968 events marked a turning point questioning the post-war compromise between capital and labor and the institutional monopoly of post-war Gaullist governance.